All right, so here we are in chapter 14, our final chapter. We're going to look at survival analysis. This is the bulk of this chapter. We're going to talk briefly about life tables. So life tables are used to measure mortality, survivorship, and the life expectancy of a population at varying ages. They're constructed um, by, in many countries by basing an average of age-specific death rates for a three-year time period, generally before and after and during a census taking. So in this country, it's every 10 years. So um, every country or state would collect age-specific death rates for, for the last one would be 09, 2010, and 2011, and take the averages of those and construct their, their um, life table. Right now we're in a census year, so it would be 2019, 20, and 21, and I imagine this would be a very different um, uh, experience for life tables because of the coronavirus. So period or current life tables, those are synonymous, are based on the mortality experience of a hypothetical, so these aren't real people, this is a hypothetical cohort of newborn babies, usually 100,000 newborns, who are subject to the age-specific mortality rates on which the table is based. It traces the cohort of new, newborn babies throughout their lifetime under the assumption that they are subject to the age-specific mortality rates of a region or country. So these would be specific to uh, Texas, to California. Um, and then they do them also by race and ethnicity and gender. Uh, there are different types. The unabridged is for single years of life and abridged is for five-year cohorts of life or sometimes you'll see them for 10 years. Okay, so from the textbook, these are the two types. Unabridged goes from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and I know that I've told you not to have overlapping categories, and that's true, um, but as the book explained, the probability of you dying on your actual birthday is very slight, so it's okay to have these overlapping um, uh, categories. And then also in, ch in chapter 14, page 608, 609, you can read at length what each of these columns mean. I'll just read the headers. So this first column is the probability of dying during the interval. This is the number of uh, survivors to the beginning of the interval, the number of deaths during the interval, person years lived, so total time lived during the interval by those alive at the beginning of the interval, total person years lived, so this would be in this and all subsequent in intervals, and then expected remaining lifetime from the beginning of the interval, okay? so. Right now, based on 2010 data, a newborn in 2010 would be expected to live uh, almost 79 years in general, not specific to race, gender, or any of those things. And then same thing, exactly the same thing, but by per every five years. Okay, so they're used, of course, in insurance companies and Social Security and pensions and state pensions are interested in knowing how long to expect people to live so that they know what to do with their money. And because they include probabilities, they can test hypotheses. So for example, we're gonna look at page uh, 611, pa example four. So for one region, there are 5,000 people who reach their 16th birthday. If 25 of them die before their 17th birthday, do we have sufficient evidence to conclude that these deaths are significantly high? So I chopped out all the other years and just gave us the 16 to 17, all right? So we're just going to do a hand calculation. I'm not going to show you the SPSS because it's much easier actually to do by hand. Um, we see that for this age group, the probability of dying is this um, population parameter here, the 0 .000412. We want to know if 25 out of 5,000 kids, which is 0 .005, which is higher than 0 .000412, is significantly higher than expected. So our null is that the probability of dying is equal to the parameter for the population, and then the alt alternate is the prob probability of dying is greater than that of the null value. Okay, so in the, in the book, they show you the, the sample probability, which is 0 .005 right here, and then we've got the hypothesized or the, the population parameter, which is 0 .000412, and then you've got P times Q, which is the probability times its complement. So the probability of the population times one minus that probability, which is this value, over the sample size. Do all this math to n then square root it. Do all that and you get 15.99, which is a z-score, right? And we know that a 15 or 16 z-score is huge. So we don't really even have to look at the table A2, but we know that our probability is close to zero. So 0 0.0001 if we're looking at table A2. So we would reject the null hypothesis and say that 
for this particular group of people, if 25 of these 16 to 17 year olds out of 5,000 were to die, that is higher than the probability for this cohort of 100,000 babies in this life table. Okay, so survival analysis. We're moving on to the, the bulk of this chapter, which is also very quick. Survivor does not always mean the one who lived. What it, it could just mean that someone stayed cancer free or addiction free or the washing machine stayed working for a particular time period. They use these to, they use survival analysis to come up with your uh, warranties for large, um, like cars, tigers, large appliances, etc. So in survival analysis, the time lapse for the beginning, from the beginning of the observation to the time of the terminating event is considered its survival time. Right, so you have to base it on the people who didn't survive to, to do the calculations. So if someone, well, I'll get into that in the next slide, hang on. Kaplan-Meier method, it's used to describe survival behavior for some specific event, and it is based on varying survival time intervals for the terminating event being analyzed. Because cumulative probabilities are products of other individual probabilities, the Kaplan-Meier method is sometimes called the product limit method. This is what I'm just getting to. So because it's based on those who didn't survive, the ones who survive past the end of the study are censored. So survival times are censored data if the subjects survive past the end of the study or if they are dropped from the study for reasons not related to the terminating event being studied. So if they survive past the time period from which we're examining, then we don't count them in the, in the um, calculations. So a researcher wanted to determine the relative effectiveness of three types of interventions, I need an S there, designed to help long-term smokers quit. A hypnotherapy program, wearing nicotine patches, and the use of e-cigarettes. More specifically, the researcher wanted to determine if and when smokers that had quit smoking after undertaking one of these three interventions started smoking again. Participants were observed for two years, which is 104 weeks, after the interventions had taken place. A successful result would be where smokers did not start smoking again. So this is the data that you'll see. We have ID, which is just an ID number. It's not going to be used for anything. Time which is the time period uh, until they started smoking again. Status, so zero is censored, one is they had an event which is smoking. And then the intervention are hypnotherapy, nicotine patch, and e-cigarette. So we have some assumptions. A, that the event status should consist of two mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive states, censored or event, right? So you can't be smoking and non-smoking at the same time. Uh, the time to an event or censorship known as the survival time should be clearly defined and precisely measured. Where possible, left censoring should be minimized or avoided, which means that everyone needs to start at the same predetermined time, right? So you can't say, oh, uh, this person came in two weeks later, we'll fold them into the study. They have to start at the same time. And then there should be independent censoring. Reasons why cases are censored are not related to the event, not because we don't want them to count. Okay, so you just go to Analyze, you go down to Survival, you go to Kaplan-Meier. And then, conveniently, everything's labeled uh, a certain way. So we have uh, time goes at a time, the factor is the intervention, that's the three different um, factors, and then you can label cases up by ID, but it's not crucial. And this particular one has um, ID numbers, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Then we have to do, do the status. So we bring status over to status, and we've got this little question mark. We click define event, and we tell it that the event that, the, when I see a number one, that means the person has started smoking again. I click continue, and I go back to, I actually go back here, and I'm going to click compare factor. Okay, so I'm here at compare factor, and I'm going to just choose log rank, and I'm going to say pooled over straight F. Okay, since we have three groups, we're going to come back and do this one, pairwise over straight F, because it's like the least significant difference. <clears throat> there may be a better um, method for keeping people from smoking, but we want to know which ones are significant and which ones are significant from each other. So we'd say continue, and then we go back to the, the uh, beginning and say okay. 
But then we're not going to, we're not finished. We're going to go right back and we're going to go to this recall dialog box. And the first one that we have just done a Kaplan wire, so we're just going to click it again. We go back to the compare factor levels and we're going to uncheck the pooled over strata and we're going to check the pairwise over strata. Then we're going to hit continue. We're going to get all that same output, but we're going to get the pairwise comparisons also. So you're going to have a lot of output. First thing to do is go to the graph. All right, so what do we have here? We have the blue line is the hypnotherapy pro, uh, program. We have the red line, which is the nicotine patch. And then we have the green line, which is the e-cigarettes. And then when we have this little plus in our line denotes when somebody was censored. So we got one here, we got one here, we got one here, et cetera, et cetera. We want to see the highest, in, in this case, here we see that hypnotherapy did way better than the patch or e-cigarette, meaning that the time before the subject started smoking, which was our event, was longer under the hypnotherapy condition. So the best one was hypnotherapy, then the patch, and then the last was e-cigarette. And then we get this omnibus test. We, have, we get means and medians. We can see that the mean number of days till the subject started smoking was longest for hypnotherapy, right? So the mean, where is it? Uh, 57 days. 20 or 26, this may be in weeks actually, 57 weeks, 26 weeks, and 17 weeks. And then we have this overall comparisons, which is a chi-square. So we see that there is a large chi-square value. And so we know that the treatment, one of these treatments is effective. And because we have a significant, there is a significant difference among those. And then we go and look at our pairwise comparisons. You have to kind of pick through your output to find it, but it says pairwise comparisons right here. And we have hypnotherapy, is different than the nicotine patch, right? It's a chi-square value of 11, significantly different. And then hypnotherapy is different than the e-cigarette, significant, even more significantly different. And then we just wanna see, is the nicotine patch different than the e-cigarette? And no, they're not. So either of these are not really good. You wanna stick with this hypnotherapy program. All right, and then you just write up the results. A long rank test was run to determine if there were differences in survival distribution for the different types of intervention. The survival distributions for the three interventions were statistically significantly, significantly different. You write out your value. A long rank pairwise comparisons were run to determine which intervention groups had different survival distributions. There was a statistically significant difference in sur survival distributions for the hypnotherapy versus nicotine patch, and I give that value, and hypnotherapy and e-cigarette patch, or e-cigarette um, program. And I could have said there was no difference between uh, patch and e-cigarette. And that is it.